I'm Jeff Vogel at the Coral Springs Museum of Art. This is an exciting evening, and I'm with Hubert Phipps, who is, well, I know you're a sculptor, but you're much more than that, aren't you? Uh, yeah, Jeff, so for this show, man, um, there's a lot of wall space here. And so, yeah, I'm a sculptor, but uh, the genesis of all my work is drawing. And with all the wall space that is here, I thought I would bring in uh, drawings and prints, screen prints. So we've and, and then pigment drawings such as these to add some color. And uh, out of the 40 works, I think there's 15 sculptures, and and the rest are uh, two-dimensional work, um, which is what, where I actually started as an artist back in the day. What got you started back in the day? <laughs> so as a as long as I can remember, I've been drawing, and I used to love going through cartoons, and my father had a compendium of political cartoons back in the 60s, and I would copy those endlessly, and I loved illustrations, and I loved cars, and airplanes, and, and all kinds of things, and I would just be drawing all the time. Is it shape that catches your eye mostly? Yeah, there's something about the forms, the wonderful forms in this world. The human form, the, the mechanical forms, the natural forms that, I mean, I'm just in awe of. And to be able to, to capture it on paper, to me, there's something just fascinating about that. And taking that, that paper drawing and turning it into a three-dimensional object either keeps you up at night or that you dream about at night? That is the challenge because in, in a two-dimensional, in a drawing, it's, you can make the most um, grandiose illusions. Nothing really has to connect mechanically or be integral or have any real integrity. It can be whatever you can dream of. But with sculpture, it's, you gotta connect the dots. It has to, you can't float metal in space and so that would be the, the one of the main challenges is, is connecting it all as one one solid piece not only connecting it and still being able to maintain that really kind of whimsical magical element and beyond that to figure out what's on the back side of the two dimension uh, of the drawing well i know what it looks like on the front and how do I how do I tie in and what do I create in the back? So it's it's a very exciting in some respects, and and sometimes these drawings just do not translate to sculpture. How do you keep people's hands off of your sculptures? I don't. I'm not concerned about it. I encourage people to touch the sculpture. Because I was I was looking at one earlier and I I wanted to feel it. So help yourself. I, and we don't have any cars here saying don't touch the sculpture. If I have sculpture that's going to be damaged by the human touch, we'll usually cover it with a vitrine or some sort of plexiglass. But anybody's welcome to come and touch and feel. And one of the things I'm excited about is doing a project for, um, for, for uh, blind folks who can't see and to provide sculpture. So somehow there is this drive, this passion to create and um, I get a kick out of it. So I'm doing this work for me. I'm, I'm an art fan first and foremost. I love artwork. And so I you know, realize that you know, I get to do, I'm fortunate I get to do this, but I'm the collector. I'm the guy that I'm making this artwork for. I'm very fortunate I'm able to do that. And so I'm the collector, and, I, and, and what I put together, if my house was anywhere near this size, all this work would go back and it would be hanging in my house. So I've got a web page, uh, hubertphipps.com, but Hubert Phipps, uh, there's a Wikipedia page which will speak a little bit to my history, and then the, the website's the best way to learn more what's been going on in the past, what's going on now, and what I'm working on for the future. The work is beautiful, um, a lot of movement, and uh, I really love the energy it gives off. I really like it. What thoughts come to mind when you look at it? Mm, I don't know, I guess I just feel it. I don't really yeah. have um, 
thoughts. I just okay, your feelings. Enjoy, it's just feelings. Yeah. yeah, movement. A lot of movement, and I really like it. Yeah. The scope of his talent is just incredible. Um, I've I've known Huber for for a while and seen some of his work, but this is the first time I've seen it in person. And um, the the scope, being able to express not only his um, his painting, but then the sculptures to be able to to do both and uh, do it in, in, with such talent is, is remarkable. Do any thoughts or feelings in particular come to mind when you look at his work? Uh, yeah, overwhelming. <laughs> <laughs> just really overwhelming. Um, and uh, I, I'm just really, really just uh, amazed by the talent. His talent is just incredible. I think it's different. I think it's something I haven't seen before. I think uh, it's great work. I, I really do enjoy it. It's very nice. What thoughts come to mind when you look at it? Some of it to me seems dark, but it, it puts you in a different place, I think. I think it's, um, it's thought provocative. For me it is. What do you think of Hubert Phipps's work? I think it's genius. I think the way that he looks at designs and architecture and puts them together in a fluid motion, it's fabulous. Do any thoughts or emotions come to mind when you look at his work? Well, what's the one that I love over there? Um, Sky Temple? I always think of Krypton. Like, you know, Superman's home planet, or just like the way it's just elevated and the peaks and everything. It's beautiful. His, his work is powerful. It's absolutely. It's, it's, and it's gorgeous. It's, it's fun to look at. It's pretty. It makes you think. It's, it's really cool. Introduce Hubert Phipps, who has this wonderful show next door. If you could come and say hello, perhaps. Good evening to all, and, and thank you for showing up. And I had no idea I was going to be asked to speak tonight. And, um, uh, first of all, thanks uh, to Julia for giving me this great opportunity. And so I first viewed this space um, with Bruce. Can everybody hear me now? Perfect. So, thank you. Um, I first viewed the space where I'm exhibiting about 15 months ago with Bruce. And uh, Julia was so kind to give me the opportunity to exhibit here. When I went through that space, um, I thought, oh boy, that's a lot of wall space. And I just started to do these these uh, larger paint pigment drawings. But, uh, the scale of my work uh, traditionally has not been that, that large. So um, I accepted the challenge, but I was, uh, you know, I wasn't yippee-i-o. Um, <laughs> wow. uh, I kind of <laughs> was a little bit in shock, and, but I knew there was a great opportunity here. And, and the opportunity for me was, was a personal development opportunity. And um, let me just say that first and foremost, uh, I'm, I'm an art fan. So um, that, that's where I come into the picture. I'm so I'm lucky that I'm able to actually do this uh, creation part of it. Um, but I, I'm, I'm an art fan. I, lo I love going. To, I've got a library of books. I go to museums. I go to art galleries. I come to events like this and, and have been all my life. Um, and this certainly was a challenge, and, uh, but I had a lot of people help me, and I had a lot of supporters. Um, people just said, hey, you know, don't worry about it. And uh, of course, I, I worried about it. <laughs> and it wasn't but five months ago, I was still like, waking up in the middle of the night going, ah, I'm not sure I've got enough work to cover that space. And, um, and so, my process was when when, I, when that fear came in, and when when you know I just became full of fear, I get up and go to the studio and go to work. And so this has been a great uh, adventure and a great uh, development 
process for me. I branched out a little bit. I started bringing in some color. I've got some screen prints here. I've worked with some incredible collaborators. Brand X uh, is the printing, uh, soap screen printing firm up in Queens, New York. Uh, they just did a fabulous job. There's a lot of collaboration going, that goes on with the sculpture. Uh, I work with uh, some of the best foundries in, in, in the United States and actually in China. So there's a piece that was uh, cast in Fuzhou. Um, so there's a lot of people that are involved in this process. And um, so it's, um, and, and down in my small team, I've got one full-time assistant in my studio in Virginia. I got a part-time guy that comes in. But at the end of this uh, journey, putting this all together, we pulled in some additional help and we had a crew of about six the last two weeks working full-time. And um, just getting everything crated and packed and in, into the truck. And we come down from Virginia. And it's about an 18 hour uh, drive, 20 hours. Um, With a 40 foot trailer. And, you know, I have this trailer that I bought. I thought I was crazy buying a 40-foot trailer a couple of years ago because it's, it's almost unmanageable for me driving it. I'm not sure I'm really qualified to uh, manage to, drop it, to damage it when I pulled it out of the dealership the first day I bought it. But, but with all this work that you see over there, uh, they pretty much filled that trailer up. Anyway, so I had some, I had some great help. I came out with three guys. That uh, have been with me for some time, and so um, it, it just uh, and, and then and then all of you have shown up here tonight, so, and this is very special, and um, and I'm, I'm a little bit overwhelmed, uh, and so um, I'm, I'm so glad you did show up. Um, I'm happy to you know I'll be around here for a little bit and if you have any questions or anything. Um, but I, I really appreciate all of you coming out tonight. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Bruce Helander, and I'm here at the Coral Springs Museum in the survey uh, of works by Hubert Phipps. Uh, a very engaging show, a very eccentric show, uh, and a great opening as well. Uh, Hubert uh, has uh, produced a, a, a pretty amazing um, uh, survey of his work including drawings, sculpture, prints and carvings and so on. And I think one of the highlights of the show, uh, judging by the audience, are these uh, pictures here. Uh, this work, uh, I think, uh, uh, in, in listening to the crowd, this is a picture called Mystique. Uh, it's one of the most popular pictures in the show. It was also showed at the show at the exhibition that I curated at the uh, Center for Creative Education in West Palm Beach in the Northwood Village. Uh, these are very curious pictures because he starts with coating the entire uh, uh, paper with a charcoal solution, and then he goes back in and erases these passages, oftentimes in the dark, oftentimes sort of intuitive without actually being able to see what he what he's done which is really pretty remarkable and in the morning he goes back and revisits this thing and adds things but you know as an art critic and an, and, an, and an art writer I must say these are these are some of the most engaging and inventive works that I've seen in a long time and it's very hard as I said earlier in my talk to make a great picture out of black and white and Hubert seems to be able to do that. These are very spirited, they're very rhythmic, uh, they're very handsome, they're very engaging, uh, they are a totally innovative. I don't know of another work like this. Uh, if you were to make a stretch, you might say, you know, there's a connection to Richard Serra or uh, Tony Smith or other uh, wonderful sculptors who also enjoyed uh, doing um, uh, drawings as well. Drawings not only for their sculpture, but just drawings in general. So this is just a great picture. That's it, we're going, we're going to the next one here. So I'm here with these wonderful screen prints that Hubert has put together in the last year. 
Uh, they have, of course, a connection to the black and white drawings. Uh, they're abstract expressionist nature, they're non-narrative, they're very beautiful and very engaging, and a complex composition uh, with green and a purple color. Here, uh, also the same kind of engaging work uh, that is limited in color, uh, but also makes a, a great uh, a statement. These, of course, are connected to the black and white drawings that are so handsome, uh, but it really uh, added, uh, I think, as the curator in discussing the placement of these works, uh, Hubert insisted on making sure that he put some of his color work into the show, which was really a brilliant idea, and at the end of the day, the artist is the one who makes the command. But when we were putting the show together, which was an all-day lean, you lean the work before you hang the work, of course, uh, Hubert had the great idea of, of, uh, uh, of incorporating these color works with all of the black and white sculptures. I think it worked very well, yeah, very good. We're gonna look over here. Uh, this is a work called uh, Sky Temple by Hubert Phipps. Um, most artists, of course, when they're building a sculpture and putting it together, they need a series of drawings so they know what they're doing. Michelangelo did not start carving uh, a block of marble without a plan. And his work for the infamous David sculpture was intricate drawings. And you realize, here's, here's Michelangelo sort of starting with the foot and going up or starting with the head and going down, but he had to have a plan, he had to have a drawing. So Hubert, as part of the great uh, tradition of uh, drawings for sculpture, has put together this very engaging, very interesting drawing, which he has transferred over here to the sculpture. So that drawing is reflected here in the same sky temple where a part of the sculpture uh, involves uh, the background as well. And so in, in many ways it has the composition of uh, a painting, but also in the sky temple it has a sense of kind of a, a kind of a spirit of outer space, a kind of a series of uh, space travel, uh, but at the end of the day, the work is about this wonderful composition that he's made. And, and, and indeed, you can put in together any kind of interpretation that you want. That's it. Here we go. Over here. Well, I'm leaning against a work of art at the moment here, this wonderful sculpture, but m most importantly, uh, the incredible ingenuity of Hubert Phipps in putting these soot drawings behind this. What are these? These are, these are uh, conceptual drawings that are made with a blowtorch. So he's actually using the smoke from a blowtorch uh, into literally burning the canvas, the, the, the paper, into making these wonderful engaging compositions that are all done by burning the paper. And so in many cases you have this odd juxtaposition of these disparate forms, all formed in a way by a controlled accident. And they are actually very handsome and they work with the, the rest of his work. You know, I was saying, I said, Hubert, you know, when you're using this blowtorch and you're, and you're burning this thing and you're ending up with drawings that are from soot, be careful that you don't make an ash of yourself. You know, I, thank you very much for that joke. I can't believe it. Anyway, so one of, the, one of the most interesting things in the show is that people are so intrigued with the method of which this, uh, these compositions have been made. And because Hubert Phipps is such an inventive guy, there's no challenge that he doesn't accept. And when he finally realized that he could put something together that kind of had a, a relationship with what he was doing, he decided to do these soot paintings, which are, which are really kind of burn paintings, very interesting, very unique. In most cases, an artist has to be flexible and sort of trust his intuitive judgment. And with Hubert Phipps, there is an, a, a very interesting, especially from a curatorial point of view, of an artist who is uh, based in sculpture, but also has a way of transforming his work into these beautiful prints. They're also 
in, in, they're very simple compositions, they're very dynamic, and in this case, when we were, when we were hanging this show, we decided that, that it would be wonderful to have this horizontal picture above these two works. These sculptural works were originally parts and fragments of a, um, a, a, a company that used bits and pieces of work uh, to, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I can explain this exactly, but they were used in, a, in, in these uh, support things for presses. And Hubert came along and realized the aesthetic beauty of the, these things and bought them from the company and then reproduced them in, uh, in, in cast. They include all of these little idiosyncratic, uh, flavorful kind of uh, uh, marks and scratches and whatever that came uh, over years and years of use, and then ended up putting them in a beautiful sculptural context. Um, these are among my favorites. We're gonna do one more thing. Here we go. While most of Hubert's work is uh, abstract and is very difficult to put a tag on, some of his work starts to evolve into literal recognizable imagery. In this piece called Rocket, it's quite obvious that the sculptural composition is made after the mystique of rocketry and spacecraft. This is a interesting work by Hubert, who has transformed the notion of a rocket ship into this wonderful, simple, minimal uh, uh, kind of composition uh, that immediately has a resonance of uh, a rocket ship or something doing in outer space. It's clean lines, it's sophistication, it's propulsion is all part of the composition and it's really one of the more interesting pieces in the show. An artist who puts something like this together, the absolute, uh, 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 you know, sort of finite kind of ambition would be to see this kind of work in 30 or 40 feet tall in some great sculpture garden or something or other. So it's almost a maquette for something bigger and better, but it's very handsome. And it's the most narrative work in the show where you look at it and you see this great uh, kind of outer space uh, object. And that's the story with the show. I'm glad you're all here. And we celebrate this creativity of Hubert Phipps in, in this, I think, a very memorable show at the Coral Springs Museum of Art. Thank you.